This is part of the data engineer learning plan from Databricks. So if you go to the Databricks Academy, they have a lot of plans, a lot of courses that you can take in order to uh, become uh, a Databricks professional. And this data engineer learning plan includes uh, three things. Okay, so Lakehouse Fundamentals, which is pretty much like a very basic course that you can just skim through. And then the data engineer associate, which is the first course, and then the data engineer professional, which goes into more in-depth topics after you have the data engineer associate certification. I took this course a month ago. Let's check the, the web assessor. So when you actually take the course, you're going to have to schedule it on webassessor.com. Okay, so you need to register for an exam, go through all of the steps necessary. For example, click on register for an, for an exam. Um, if you don't have an account, you need to, of course, first create an account and then you have all of these uh certifications that you can take the test for okay so we're talking about um the databricks certified data engineer associate so you can see now it's a version two and version three is because they just updated their course from version two to version three and they're going to have version two also uh, um, available up until april next year from what i from what i remember so um back like a month ago uh, when uh, when I t when I took the certification, uh, only version two was available. So they put version three, I think, in the past weeks or so. Okay, so now you're going to probably go for version three. But version two and version three is not that big of a deal. It's just some updated content that you can anyway find in the Databricks do uh, in the Databricks docs. Okay, so yeah, I took this exam. Uh, yeah, you for example, let's say you want to register for it. Let's say I want to register for version 3, right? You continue and then you pick a date and whatnot and then you need to be careful about these things, right? You need to read uh, this uh, properly and then acknowledge that you read all the information stated above, okay? So um, you need to have proper identification, you're going to uh, have a biometric scan and it's pretty, pretty um, straightforward, you know, in order to register for this exam, okay? Now, let's go through my assessments again. Let's go back. As you can see, on the 30th of November, which is literally a month ago, um, I took this exam. The result was passed. And if we go to, uh, to see more details, you see what they are um, assessing, okay? So they're like, five main topics you need to score at least 70 percent on the exam i scored 88.88 which is a good uh, good number a lucky number um, and then it also breaks down the topics that were covered in those questions and uh, what they were a part of like for example on the lake on the lake house platform i scored 100 percent elt with spark sql and python 100 percent and then uh, as you can see here in incremental data uh, processing 75 percent and so on and so forth i can't remember exactly how many questions there were of each because they don't really say how many there are um or there, there might be some sort of documentation where they have that but i think it's anyway it's about two three four five questions of uh of each anyway it doesn't really matter it's kind of balanced with regards to what they're testing for but uh the, the two the two main things that you need to know are of course ELT with Spark SQL and Python and incremental data processing, you know, autoloader and all that stuff. Um, but again, you, you see everything is broken down and you know exactly what you did and what you did, uh, what, what you did well and what you didn't do well, okay? Unfortunately, when you take the exam, it doesn't really tell you, um, it doesn't really tell you exactly which questions you got wrong and which questions you, you got right, so you just, go through the exam and then um, they just uh, tell you okay you passed or you didn't pass okay and they tell you the score uh, what's what's nice is also that you have the, the it's kind of nice right because you know how much it took you to go through all of the questions okay so for me it took me 42 minutes um, so I mean you're not gonna linger on it it's gonna take the, the time that you have in order to finish this, co this, uh, this exam is an hour and 30 minutes. So it's more than enough time for you to, um, to, to go through these questions. You can also go back and, um, for, 
for example, if you want to come back to um, to a question, you can um, go back and um, change your answer and stuff like that. And yeah, at the end also they show you all of your answers and then you can decide whether you want to submit those questions and whatnot. And it's pretty, pretty nice as, um, as an exam experience. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go through the course. Okay. So you have, for, for example, the first thing that you need to do before, um, thinking about like doing anything is make sure that you choose either Azure or AWS, you know, in order to create a, um, an Azure Databricks service account. Okay. For Azure, I, I just created a resource. Okay. As you can see, um, it's a standard pricing tier. Of course, you can change this to a premier premium uh, pricing tier very easily by just recreating the resource with the premium plan. It's super easy. And then, of course, you can go and launch this workspace. Then you, you launch this workspace. And then, of course, you have this. Um, you, you need to add it as a repo. And the repo you get from the course um, specifications. Like, let's, uh, let's actually go to the course. So resume where I left off because I can't even remember. Right, because I've been going through this quite a bit. Um, if we look at the access course materials, you go to this link and then you get the source code from, uh, from here, right? And then you can just either, either get it from here or you can just, uh, clone that, uh, re repo and then uh, use it to your own, uh, to your own benefits. I actually forked it and then I, um, added it to my, um, to my, um, Azure Databricks subscription. Okay. Also, they walk you through how you can do that is not a problem. I think getting started with the Databricks platform. Let me see where they walk you through. I think they actually walk you through uh, create and manage interactive clusters. I know there is somewhere where they actually tell you about this let me let me check because i can't even can't remember now anyway there is uh th there's a ah, no sorry i was looking in the wrong place okay it's actually in the course they they will show you how to set up your workspace i think somewhere yeah okay so you get this uh, git versioning with databricks repos and then using databricks repos you can actually go through these lessons and they walk you through how to um, how to set up your repo from their uh, from their from their github okay so you, you you need to go through these lessons in order to uh, to add that repo to your Azure subscription okay it's um, it's, it's relatively simple and once you get that repo here you will have all of these um all of these lessons okay and each lesson has an associated notebook with it all these lessons follow very closely what you actually have in the um, in the course there's some uh some um some lessons that don't have um, an associated notebook but pretty much everything else is here at the beginning what i was doing i was going through each le each lesson and just watching it and like just uh, you know, following to, to the letter. And then I realized the course itself, um, everything that is talked about in the course is actually written down in the, uh, in the documents, in, in, the, in the notebooks. Okay, so for example, if we go to, let's say, incremental data processing, you see there's a lot of text here and whatnot, and they walk you through a lot of things. Everything here, uh, everything in the course is just read from this notebook. So if you watch the, the videos, it's not going to give you much benefit because you will already have it in the notebooks. So after a couple of lessons, I realized, oh man, I just, I can't be bothered to like, listen to all these videos and just like um, spend so much time like hearing somebody. I know a lot of people like to 
um, like, like to learn from videos. I don't like to learn from videos that much because I rather do stuff and it's easier to read and then recreate stuff and just uh, move faster like that rather than just watch all the videos. Okay, I kind of like videos even on YouTube, videos like this one where I just talk to you directly and I give you some advice and whatnot. But when it comes to actually um, coding or learning stuff, I'd rather read the documentation and, and go from there. And for this specific exam, you have everything that you need in the um, in the GitHub repo. Okay, the GitHub repo is this one. Or where is it? Is this one? Yeah. So data engineering with DataBricks English. Okay. Contains all the resources students need to follow along with the instructor teaching this course, in addition to the various labs and their solutions. Okay. So. If you have this repo, you can fork it and you can then uh, clone that repository in your um, Azure Databricks subscription and then just um, take it from there. It's super, super easy. And if you run these examples, where is it? If you run these, um, these examples, you're, you're gonna have everything that you need. Of course, you're gonna need to pay for the compute, but for how long I actually needed this, it, I paid about like they say 30 30 pounds for the subscription it was on the standard tier and uh, i only needed the premium tier for a couple of things um when it comes to um to, to some uh, to some topics like um thing like for delta yeah for delta live tables you need a premium subscription you also need it for uh db uh, databricks sql queries you need that uh, premium subscription, but you can you, you can just switch from standard to a premium just for those lessons so that you kind of figure out how to create those Delta Life tables. And to be honest, when it comes to Delta Life tables, you don't even need to um, uh, go for, for a premium subscription. You can just watch the videos and you're going to have all the information that you need from there in order to pass the exam. Okay, so I think you can do very well with just the standard subscription. But nevertheless, you're going to have to pay a little bit. You need to pay a little bit of money to get um, certified, you know, you know? So it's gonna run you maybe again, like 30 pounds for the, um, for the compute. And um, how much is it? $200, uh, dollars, so about 180 pounds for the exam. So in the end, it's not that much for this particular exam, which is definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, you have everything that you need in uh, in this repo, okay? And then you can just walk through all of these. Let, let's go for ETL with Spark SQL, okay? Let's go for the first lesson, okay? All you need to do is run all of the cells and read all of this, um, all of this property and make sure that you understand. You're going to have a lot of um, links that will point you to the documentation. Let's see if we find something here. Uh, I mean, this is a pretty st uh, straightforward lesson. Let's go through. Let's go to multi-hop architecture, right? Um, see a lot of a lot of words here that you need to <laughs> make sure that that you that you read and understand uh, what they're talking about and how you can. Uh, okay, so we have a link to to the documentation, right? Let's. Um, the documentation is um, is the documentation on AWS. It doesn't really matter because it's the same thing. So you just need to um, it, when there's something that you don't understand from the um, from the course, from the um, from the notebooks or whatnot, you can definitely go to the um, to the documentation. And in the documentation, you have literally everything you need, and they walk you through everything that you need. Like for example, um, I think. This right, like the file notification mode versus directory listing mode. These are important um, things to know, and pretty much everything that you have in the documentation will be uh, linked from the notebooks, right? Like whatever you need to know, you're gonna find a link to the notebook uh, from the notebook to the documentation. Make sure that you read that. Um, you read both what's in the notebook. Make sure that you understand. And if you don't understand, go to the documentation, find out more details. And make sure that um, you understand those concepts very well. The things that I um, had to go through a couple of times to make sure that I understand properly are uh, were autoloader, okay, and um, 
there are quite a bit of things here that they they're going to try to trick you with in the questions in the in the exam. Um, let me see what else I found more more challenging and things that I had to go through um, more than once. Uh, so yeah, incremental data pre uh, pre processing. Um, there's the life tables you have to go through uh, the documentation as well. It's not enough just to read from uh, from this, okay? Because you're going to have a lot of questions about um, scaling up and scaling out. Anyway, there are a lot of settings that you kind of need to understand what they do because they're going to ask you, you're going to have questions on that. So the incremental data processing part and delta life tables, I think they're very, very important to know and you're going to get a lot of questions from there. Again, you're going to, you're going to get some Python questions and SQL questions as well. Um, I'm not worried about that. You already know Spark, I'm assuming. So you're going to find it relatively easy to go through that. And, and Spark SQL is super easy. And uh, I don't think you're going to have any problems with that, um, with that aspect. So these are a couple of things that, um, that, that you need to be aware of when it comes to this exam. You can easily pass the exam if you go through the repo and you go through all of the notebooks, run them yourself. Okay, spend some money on a cluster on Azure or AWS, doesn't matter. Spend some, uh, spend some money there, make sure that you run all of these examples, make sure that you understand um, everything that's going on in those notebooks. Go through the documentation whenever you don't understand something fully, because there will be tricky questions. There will be tricky questions in the exam. What I found is that the, the Databricks exam is, uh, is more tricky than, for example, what exams you get from Google, you know, from GCP or, uh, or from Azure, right? Like for those certifications, I found those, uh, those questions a lot more easy for, and easy, not, not necessarily like really easy, but Databricks have, um, I, I think they have better questions. I think they have better questions and you learn better, um, and, and you need to learn better in order to, you know, prepare for for this exam. But overall, I think like if you're going to go through this material a couple of times, um, I think they also have some uh, uh, exam prep. They have some questions somewhere where you can um, where, where you can see the type of questions that you're going to uh, go for, uh, you're going to encounter. I think it's going to be relatively easy for you to pass, but don't take this very lightly because they have tricky questions and uh, you will need to go through the documentation a couple of times to make sure that you understand everything that's going on. And even, even if you're, you're going to know more than they're going to ask you, it's going to be better, right? Because you're going to probably need to take the professional exam as well. And those, um, those topics um, will be super helpful, you know, for for the professional exam as well.